Hey, Audacious Church, how are you doing? A very, very Merry Christmas to you, whether you, wherever you're tuning in from, whether it is afar or a near. I'm wishing you a, a blessed Christmas period. Uh, thank you for joining us for today's devotions. I don't know whether you are hiding from, from your in-laws or you're stealing a few moments of serenity uh, before the kids wake up in this crazy holiday period, but thank you for making some time in your day. For, for our devotions. And today I've got the honor and privilege of sharing on God's word um, from Mary's perspective of, of the Christmas story, which, which is really cool. And I kind of really want to speak into, into fear today. And my encouragement to you before we even get going is that favor, God's favor to be specific, means no fear. Where there is the favor of God, there is no reason for fear. That is my encouragement to you. So let me begin by briefly and very quickly reading the word of God. We today are looking at Luke 1, verse 28 to 33, and it says this. It says, Gabriel appeared to her and said, Greetings, favored woman. The Lord is with you. Confused and disturbed, Mary tried to think what kind, what the angel could mean. But don't be afraid, Mary, the angel told her, for you have found favor with God. You will conceive and give birth to a son. You will name him Jesus, and he will be very great. He will be called Son of the Most High God. The Lord God will give him the throne of his ancestor David, and he will reign over Israel forever. His kingdom will never end. Amen and hallelujah. Glory be to God for his word. Now, let me tell you something that you already know, something brand new. And it is that, you know, we've all encountered fear in our lives. And there is a very strong chance that you will encounter fear again in your life. And so there are constant crossroads throughout our lives where you and fear will intersect. And, you know, fear can be quite corrupting. It can tear us down. Uh, it's an emotion. And like many emotions, it can shape the lens at which we view the world. And, you know, we don't always choose when, this, when fear rises up or any emotion rises up. Uh, but if they go unchecked, these emotions can, can overstay their welcome. And I think it's important for us as, as Christians, as Bible believers, to take captive of these because it can really uh, diminish the, the life that Jesus intended for you. We, we stop living in the fullness that Christ has promised and you know, we begin to make decisions or have perspectives that can limit us and are based on you know, how I can look after myself, self-preservation, or out of fear and instead of you know, living in the fullness and boldness that Jesus Christ uh, proclaimed for us. And I think we can all kind of sympathize with, with Mary, a, a young girl, a teenager, betrothed to a, to a wonderful man, um, and she finds out that she's now pregnant. That's crazy, right? That's, that's insane. Um, no less she finds out that she's pregnant with the Messiah, uh, the Son of God, and she's just been told this by an angel. Now, if you were to go to, to your family and tell them that, I don't know how well that's going to go down, but in my family, if I told my mom, mom... I'm having a baby and it's the son of God. I'm getting a, a very stern look and maybe a clip of the ear. I don't know what things are like in your household, but hey, I would have been terrified. So it is not, I, it, you know, I, it doesn't require a lot of imagination to believe that maybe Mary too was afraid. And, you know, even though, you know, the angel said all these things, she probably did feel a lot of fear in that moment. But we only read up to 33 of this verse. We know, of course, the story does Go on and continue. And if you continue reading in your Bibles, please do, uh, to verse 38. And it says, it says that she responded by saying that I am the Lord's servant and may everything you have said about me be true. So what happened? We go from verse 28, where this young girl is fearful, afraid, terrified, to verse 38, where she's declaring that, no, I am a servant of the Lord and that everything you have said about me is true. That's powerful. Fear came knocking but she kicked the curb. She silenced it. And how, how did she do that? And I think in, in these very short chapters, uh, there are three things we can extract from what Mary did, which can help us the next time that we meet fear at those crossroads that I mentioned just before. I believe that the first thing that, that Mary did is that she heard the word of God. The second thing she did is that she aligned herself with it. And the third thing she did is that she had faith for the gap. Now, what do I mean by all of this? I by heard the, the word of God as my first point. Um, on two occasions in this, in this very few verses, we hear the angel of the Lord saying, Mary, you are highly favored. Mary, God is with you. Mary, you are God's chosen person, or words to that effect. 
we, we hear the, the word of God very clearly for her life. And I think what Mary, though she had, you know, every reason to fear over, hey, I don't know what's going on. Things are going to be happening to my body that are out of my control. Uh, and I don't know what situations maybe are out of control in your life or are happening to you. And you could very much have very much reason to, you know, fear. But what Mary did is she chose to hear the word of God in that moment. Now, God is always speaking. He will either be speaking directly to you or he uses his scripture to communicate something to you. So my question to you is, hey, what is God saying? Because when you when you hear the word of God and you know the word of God over your life, over your situation, the boisterous taunts and loudness of, of you know, lies or fear are silenced. And instead you hear the quiet stillness and that comes with the truth of God. And it's powerful. So that's the first thing they did. Mary heard the word of God. The second thing that she did is she aligned herself with it. She's like, okay, cool. This is what the word of God says, but this is the reality. And you can be parallel to the word of God at times in your life, but you are going in two completely different directions. But unless you align yourself with it in, in your thoughts, in your language, in your perspective, in your attitude... Is, is your life living out what the word of God says? God has spoken over maybe your marriage or maybe the health situation of somebody in your family. But is your language be like, oh, I don't know if they're going to make it. Oh, this could happen. Oh, we're just, having good, we're just going to have to make do. We're just taking it each day at a time. No, the, the language that you should have, the perspective that you should have is aligning yourself with it. Change your attitude. Fix your eyes on the word of God. When all else fails, the word of God does not fail. So that's, that's the second thing that Mary did. Mary heard the word of God and she aligned herself with it in her thoughts, in her attitude, in her perspective, in her posture, in all these ways. And the third thing that she did is she had faith for the gaps. See, after, after Mary had just heard this encouraging word from, you know, the angel of the Lord, where he says, you know, you are highly favored. And then in verse 38, she says, you know what? I am a servant of the Lord and everything you've said about me is true. Nothing changed in that moment. Nothing changed in that moment. She still had to go and tell Joseph, hey, I'm pregnant. She still had to go and tell her family. She still had to go deal with the consequences of what was happening in her life at that time. She still had to raise Jesus Christ. She knew that he would one day sit on thrones and be this great person or whatever, as the angel said. But she still had to discipline him. She still had to wipe his bottom. She still had to raise Jesus Christ. And there were no instruction manuals. There was no kind of, you know how to guide she had to figure it out and how she did that she had faith she heard the word of god she aligned herself with it but there was a gap between that and its fulfillment and she had to have faith for that gap and that's my encouragement to you guys have faith for that gap god god has spoken a word over your life and many of you maybe know it but there is most definitely a gap a gap that you feel a gap that you know sometimes is daunting but have faith have faith. Oh, church, let me encourage you that God is faithful. He is faithful to accomplish every good work that he begins. That comes from Philippians 1 verse 6. So if you find yourself in a situation, where, hey, I've heard the word of God. I'm aligning myself with it, but hey, there's, there's a long way to go. Have faith. God is faithful to accomplish everything that he promises. And my, my belief for your life is that fear has no place in your life. I believe in that today you're going to hear the word of God. You're going to align to it, align with it. And you can have faith for the gaps and you will see the goodness of God in your life. I strongly believe that. Father, I pray for everybody who is watching on tuning into this devotion today. God, I pray would you would you help them to hear your word like Mary heard the word over her life that she was favored and therefore she had no reason for fear. God, I pray would everybody hear your voice in whatever situation they're going through. Would they align themselves with it and would they have any faith for the gaps? Amen. Merry Christmas, church. We, we love you. We hope, you know, you know, all your family as they gather in are coming close, that we're wishing you, you know, safe and blessed times right now. Uh, yeah, my name's Ben Rafaro. I am our young adults pastor here at church. I forgot to introduce myself up top, but God bless you, church. We love you, and I'll see you later. Bye.